So more and more in the social media era, people are willing to call people bust way, way too early in my opinion. Like a lot of the time we're hearing people call 20 year old busts, guys that have just turned 21, people saying that their NBA career is over, they don't belong in the league and that they're complete busts. And to be honest, a lot of the time that's not the case. And that's honestly the case with this guy I'm gonna talk about in this video, who seems to be reviving his career right now with the New York Knicks. He's been labeled a bust pretty much since he came into the NBA, or at least since after he finished his rookie season. And right now he is 22 years old. He's 22. He's not even close to hitting his prime, and people until a couple of weeks ago were saying he's a bust, but he's managed to completely, completely revive his career. Which is why I'm making this video. And to be honest, there's a lot of people in the same situation. There's guys like Mario Hazanya who've shown flashes of brilliance that I think eventually could become solid enough NBA players. Well, they're probably not gonna be stars in the NBA, I still think it's too early to call someone a bust until either one of two things happen. They're either A, out of the NBA, or B, hit about 25, 26 years old. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Emmanuel Moutier of the New York Knicks, who right now has been one of the best players on the New York Knicks roster. I know they're not great, but he's still one of the best players on an NBA team, which is just crazy, considering that last season, pretty much nobody wanted him in the league. Before you get on the video, I'd just like to say we are doing a daily December. Big thank you to everyone who subscribed this month. We are uploading a video every single day. Right now is the 26th of December, so we have got five videos left after today. So honestly, not that long. This month has gone incredibly fast and I can't believe we've still managed to get a video up every single day. It's getting really hard to think of ideas, so if you guys have any ideas, please um, send me a message on Instagram, a link will be in the description. And also, if you guys like basketball content, subscribe. We're trying to hit 90,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Obviously, we're probably not gonna hit it, but if we get anywhere close to that, that would be insane. So anyway, now let's get on to the video. So Emmanuel Moutier was seen as one of the top players in high school basketball. Some scouting services actually had him ranked number one in some stages, but in the end, in the 2014 class, it was kind of, well, the consensus number one player was Jalil Okafor, who went number three in the NBA draft the following year. He could have pretty much gone to any college, including Kentucky, and he could have played for the team with Carl Anthony Towns and Devin Booker, who nearly went undefeated for the entire year before losing to Frank Kaminsky in the final fours. And to be honest, that's the route that was probably expected and this is the route the most top prospects would have gone down. However, he decided to commit to SMU to play for Larry Brown rather than going to somewhere like Kentucky. But in the end, he didn't even play college basketball. He decided to sign a one year, $1.2 million contract to play in China for the Tigers. He played in the CBA. And a lot of people say that that was kind of a crazy decision. But at the same time, if you look at it, if he blew out his knee in college, he got injured and was done basically. He would have never been able to obviously make the NBA, make millions of dollars out of basketball. Whereas playing in China, I don't think it really hurt his draft stock too much. It doesn't tend to hurt people's draft stocks a lot, even though some people claim it did, but I'm gonna kind of debunk that in a few seconds. But either way, he would have came out with a million dollars, which pretty much sorted out his entire family for life. He came to America as a refugee, and now he had a chance to make $1.2 million for a year, and he took it. However, he did slip to number seven in the NBA draft, despite being projected to go number one the year before. And that was more so the case of teams passing on him by need more than anything else. He could have gone honestly anywhere between number three and number 10 in the draft. No one really knew because he was a bit of an unknown. And that was the draft that Justice Winslow was projected to go number four and he dropped to number 10. So 2015 draft at the top was kind of just crazy. Hazania went fifth, Porzingis went number four. And number four to the Knicks was actually where Moutier was projected to go, which ironically enough is where he's playing right now. He was drafted number seven by the Denver Nuggets, and while a lot of people would blame him dropping that far on him playing in China, guys who were ranked higher than him on the ESPN rankings, like Tyus Jones, like Miles Turner and Cliff Alexander, either were drafted lower or weren't drafted at all, whereas players like D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns who were ranked lower than him went higher. So I'm not gonna necessarily blame China on him dropping, but that's not the point of the video. In his rookie season, he actually performed quite well stats-wise. However, if you look deeper into it, he really didn't do great. He did make the all-rookie second team, and people thought he had a lot of potential. He showed flashes of brilliance. He was a starter for the Denver Nuggets. And even though he did average 13 points per game, he shot 36% from the field, which is absolutely terrible. Like, that is awful. His next season wasn't much better. He actually lost his starting spot to rookie Jamal Murray very early the next season, even though they thought Moody was gonna be a point guard for the future and not Jamal Murray. And the backcourt of Jamal Murray and Gary Harris to this day is one of the best young backcourts in the NBA. And hilariously enough, by the end of the season, he not only lost his starting spot, he was completely gone out of the rotation in most games for the Denver Nuggets. The 2017-2018 season was the first time, well for the Nuggets anyway, he shot over 40% from the field. And they ended up trading him to the New York Knicks, 
who probably gave up more than any other team would have, giving up Doug McDermott in a second round pick for him because, to be honest, the Knicks did want him in the 2014 NBA draft, they were intrigued by him, they were interested in picking him up, and it was looking like he was just a complete bust at the time. Coming into this season, if Emmanuel Moutier didn't step up, he would have been out of the league. This is the final year of his rookie contract, and he'd been so bad, not even shooting 40% from the field for an entire season, that if he didn't step it up this year, he was pretty much gone from the NBA, and there was no doubt about that. However, that is exactly what he did. He came into the season with an injury, and since coming back, he's been averaging 14 points per game for the New York Knicks, but he's only been averaging 25 minutes per game. He's shooting over 47% from the field and also shooting a decent enough percentage from three, 33%, while not great, still okay. However, in the last couple of weeks, he has really stepped up. In the last two weeks, he's had games where he scored 32 points, 34 points, and 32 points again, and has actually shown that he's probably the point guard of the future for the New York Knicks. Emmanuel Moutier, a guy who people labeled a bust from the minute he walked into the NBA until his fourth year in the league, is now proving to be almost a starting caliber point guard in the NBA. And if the Knicks, and who knows, if the Knicks do manage to draft someone like a Zion Williamson, they could be one of the most exciting teams in the NBA. And he could be the guy with the ball in his hand the most. He's gonna be the guy who's leading that team from the point guard position with the likes of Porzingis if they do get a Zion. Um, who else? Kevin Knox, Tim Hardaway Jr. That is a really solid, exciting young, young team. And Emmanuel Moutier is going to probably be a starter in the point guard of the future. I think the Knicks probably should trade Frank Nilakina while he has some value. Because even though he's a great defender, he's just not a great offense player and doesn't really suit the roster. Emmanuel Moutier is only 22 years old, meaning he's only going to get better. And he's one of the good young point guards in the NBA. I'm not going to say the best, but one of the good young point guards. However, people were labeling him a bust way too early in my opinion. And he just kind of sums up the point that I've actually made in a lot of videos, that we're labeling bust, people bust way, way too early. Like I'm seeing people label guys that were drafted in 2016 bust. I'm seeing people label Markel Fultz a bust already. Not saying he looks like a bust, just saying straight away Markel is, Fultz is a bust. Saying guys like Josh Jackson are bust. Well, obviously, so far they haven't lived up to their potential, they're still young enough that they can get better and you just never know how they're gonna do. Not every NBA great was great in their first couple of years. Guys like Steve Nash really struggled their first couple of years. Gordon Hayward wasn't great as a rookie. Obviously, he's not gonna be an all-time NBA great, but there's a lot of all-time greats who were terrible as rookies. Like Chauncey Billups barely played as a rookie. So you just never know how players pan out. And these guys were all guys that weren't drafted as 19 year olds. Like, un like the players now, like they're getting drafted younger and younger and people are giving them less and less time to develop before fans are claiming their busts and want to get rid of them. Which is something that just really frustrates me as someone who watches the NBA and someone who kind of is looking at how players can develop over time. But it's good to see Moutier finally live up to the potential that he showed in high school and hopefully he continues to have success in the future because the New York Knicks being good is good for basketball and if he keeps playing like this and they get a good draft pick next year, Porzingis comes back, they can honestly be a really exciting team in the NBA. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.